Hey everybody, this is Reapy Ron, and today we're going to be doing another tier list. This is going to be on the tier 2 weapons, and I'm going to split this video up into two different parts, so it'll be two different videos. One will go up today, one will go up tomorrow, uh, but they're both looking at the tier 2 weapons, and this time we're going to be looking at how good the tier 2 weapons are. Um, if you were to keep them uh, as soon as you can get them, and then upgrade them and keep them throughout the game. Uh, certain weapons on here, that is a very good option for. Other weapons, not so much. So we're gonna go be uh, so we're gonna be going down class by class, um, discussing each of their weapons. Some of these weapons I'll have to discuss uh, multiple times because some of them are cross perk weapons. So um, keep in mind that they might have two different places by the end of this. And uh, the next video is going to be looking at how good they are to just grab right away, and for the practical amount that you're going to keep them. So a good example of this would be like the. Um, well, let's say the Tommy gun on Commando. The Tommy gun on Commando is not particularly great to keep and to upgrade because its upgrades are kind of diminishing and the later assault rifles are better than it. But uh, it is quite a good gun to grab early on if you wish to take it after wave, you know, two or three. Uh, assuming you're playing on like a 10 round map. Um, and then use just to clean up small stuff and then uh, pretty much just dump the magazine so that it's completely empty and then just sell it for uh, the bit of cash that you can get back and then grab yourself whatever tier 3 weapon you'd like. Um, so it wouldn't be a great weapon to keep and to use but it might be a decent weapon to grab early on and use. Uh, we'll be discussing that though in the second part of this video. So let's get into this and some of the items got some of the weapons kinda got mixed around. So the first weapons we're gonna be talking about are Berserker's weapons. And Berserker has four starting, well, four tier two weapons that they can grab. Um, let me pull these up so I can give you the numbers. Let's talk about the Fire Axe first. So the Fire Axe weighs five. It does uh, 90 damage with its primary attack, 135 damage with its heavy attack, and 20 damage with its bash attack. Um, it is always a slashing attack unless you are uh, using the bash attack where it counts as a bludgeon. Um, it has a 1.9 meter hit range. I forgot to include that on the Kroval in tier one. Uh, the Kroval has a 1.5 meter range, so this is longer than that. Um, and the axe, just like all melee weapons, have a block and a parry multiplier. So if you're blocking with the axe, you take 40% uh, reduced damage. And if you're parrying, you take 50% reduced damage, which is good. Uh, the Alex upgrades pretty well too. Uh, each upgrade, it gets 20% increase in damage for one more weight. So at max, it's 60% uh, more damage at three weight. Um, I think this makes the heavy attack. I had it calculated in the other video when I was talking specifically about Berserker. I think it's somewhere around 180 or maybe it's 200 and something damage. Uh, just over 200, somewhere around in that general area. Uh, so this weapon actually isn't bad to take and upgrade all the way. When it's fully upgraded, it weighs 8, which isn't bad. It still allows you to have uh, a couple different options. It does hit quite hard with its heavy attack. Um, the axe, some people find kind of clunky, though, because of its... Not necessarily because of how it swings, but um, just the angle that you swing at. Because it's almost always kind of a somewhat diagonal, somewhat... Uh, either horizontal or vertical slash. So it takes some getting used to in that way, but it does still hit pretty hard. And it's not a bad weapon if you wanted to keep it. It is an upgrade over the uh, Kroval. If you uh, were planning on using the Kroval, this one is definitely an upgrade over that. It might not be uh, the best weapon to keep all the way through though, um, simply because there are better melee weapons than this one in terms of just like raw damage, like the battle axe and um, the pulverizer um, but it's decent I think I'm going to put the axe in B tier if you were going to keep it it's an okay weapon I mean all the berserkers weapons are pretty much guaranteed to probably at least be C tier or higher just because you can block with them um, and blocking is always nice all right moving on we're going to talk about the katana and the road redeemer because these weapons are virtually the same except for uh, the Road Redeemer has blunt damage, where the Katana has slashing damage. But other than that, their stats are exactly the same. And the Katana has a couple more moves, like the uh, stab attack with it and the draw cut that you can do with it. 
So there's a couple more things you can do with the katana than you can with the road redeemer. So with the katana and the road redeemer, both do 68 damage on their primary attack. They do 90 damage on their secondary attack. And uh, with the katana, you do 68 damage with its stab attack. And uh, actually with the road redeemer, you do the same amount of damage with the bash that you would with the katana. Um, it ha Both of them have a 1.9 meter reach, which is good. It's a pretty decent reach for most melee weapons. Um, it attacks quite fast with its primary attack. It's rather slow with its secondary attack. So these are definitely weapons that benefit more from just spamming the light attack a lot. All right. Sorry about that. I uh, was recording a different screen. I apologize for that, everybody. All right. So the Katana and the Road Redeemer actually scale the same as the Fire Axe. They scale in 20% increments, uh, adding up to one additional weight. They weigh four each to start out with. So they go up to a max weight of seven which is not bad at all. You can take plenty of other weapons with them, which is pretty good. Um, their parry and block multipliers are exactly the same as the Fire Axe. So 50% um, damage reduction when parrying, 40% when blocking. That's good. And these weapons I generally take early on, but there honestly isn't any reason to keep them for very long. Because even if you wanted a fast attacking weapon, there's better fast attacking weapons than these two that Berserker has. Um, namely the Hemoclobber and the Bone Breaker, both of which are better for light attacks than either of these two. Bone Breaker is also pretty good for heavy attacks, and so is the uh, Hemoclobber. Um, they're still not bad, though, and they're probably still lower than the Axe, but still in B tier together. They're okay weapons if you want to keep them all the way throughout the game. Um, decent for killing like trash and stuff, but Berserker usually doesn't have a problem with that. All right, and then we have the Nail Gun. So the nail gun fires out seven nails at one time, doing 35 damage per nail, uh, up to a total of 245 damage with all of them connecting. That is really good. That's actually a really good amount of damage that this shotgun can do without being upgraded. Um, you can also switch it between um, semi-auto firing seven nails, or you can switch it to just firing a single nail at a time. Nails can bounce off multiple surfaces uh, up to two times, so floors, walls, ceilings, and hit enemies. Um, they also generally pierce through, and they do pierce damage, which is uh, kind of a unique damage type, at least for Berserker weapons. Um, well, I guess the Katana can pierce with the stab, but this is actually your ac your access to the first uh, semi-auto shotgun, though, too, which is interesting. There isn't any other Tier 2 semi-auto shotguns. You have to wait till Tier 3 to get them, at least. Um, uh, the nail gun also upgrades pretty well. It upgrades, uh, by 20% for the first upgrade and then by 10% for the next two upgrades. So it goes up to, uh, 49 damage per pellet doing 343 damage in total. That's a lot of damage too. That's actually quite good. And with this thing's high rate of fire, you can, um, tear through things pretty fast with it. It also scales quite well. And once fully upgraded, it weighs eight. Eight is not a bad weight either. Um, as we've discussed, and it's a pretty good weapon for Berserker to take. Um, it's one of their range options because the other ones you have are the Eviscerator, which is pretty good, and the uh, Tesla Launcher, which is also decent, but you might want to opt for this because this is a pretty good option too. Uh, if you were planning on keeping this all the way through with Berserker, it's pretty good. I would probably say it's lower A tier. Um, you're not really going to be upset with keeping this because it is cheap. It's a good ranged option. Um, you're already going to be fine on money anyway if you're playing Berserker with any of the melee weapons. I would recommend you take this with another melee weapon, though. Don't take this with the um, Tesla Launcher unless you're going full, like, ranged tank Berserker. But that's kind of a, a niche build path that you don't see too often. Um, it could still probably work, though, for higher difficulties and whatnot, but would be a little bit different. All right, so these are all the Berserker weapons. Let's move on to the Commando's weapons. And Commando only has two weapons to talk about. So the first is the Bullpup, which is this one. Let me move these up here. All right, so the first is the Bullpup. And the Bullpup is a very awkward weapon. Not necessarily shooting it and everything like that. Like, it, it's okay for handling. It has a weight of six. It does 30 damage a shot. It can be shot in either semi-auto or full auto mode. Um, its sights are all right. Uh, it shoots 
fairly fast too in both uh, semi-auto and full auto mode. It holds a 30 round magazine, which is uh, kind of standard for most assault rifles. It also scales okay, but not the best. The first upgrade, it scales by 30% and then 35% and then by another 20%. So, and it goes up to a weight of nine. Nine weight is quite a bit. It's kind of hard to put other things with it. Uh, when it's maxed out, I believe it does somewhere around the, I think it's like 56 damage a shot. Um, it's actually probably one of the weaker assault rifles if you were to fully upgrade it. And it weighs quite a bit then too. So it is definitely not something I would recommend upgrading. I usually just don't recommend taking this weapon in general. It's... It's just so lackluster. Um, like I've, I've used it to play like, um, I think, a full game on Hell on Earth with it and upgrading it. And I didn't have that many issues with it, but it still just didn't feel as good as the other assault rifles do. And um, yeah, this one's probably going to go to D tier. You don't want to take this weapon and upgrade it a ton. Um, if you're going to take it, you're going to take it as soon as you can. And then you're going to dump the magazine out of it. Um, kill as many things as you can with it and then sell it and buy something better. You're going to go to a tier three weapon at that point. All right, moving on to the Tommy gun for commando. Now the Tommy gun holds, uh, well, the Tommy gun also weighs six. It, uh, it has a 50 round magazine capacity. It does 30 damage a shot. It has a pretty good rate of fire. Um, it is iron sights only though, which is not the best. It doesn't have the best iron sights, but it's okay. Um, it's either semi-auto or full auto mode, which is fine. Uh, it scales okay-ish. Um, it scales in 20% increments, so 20%, 40%, 60%. So at max, it's doing somewhere around 40-something-ish damage. So it's actually, I think, the weakest assault rifle in terms of damage per shot. However, it does have a big magazine, and the magazine perks actually add to it quite a bit. That way you get a very large magazine to use. Um, this one's also kind of in a strange spot because when it's fully upgraded, it goes up by three weight and that takes it up to nine. I think I've been saying pounds for the whole time, but sorry if it's just nine weight or nine kilograms or whatever it's supposed to be. Um, it goes up to nine weight, which very inconvenience you, which very much inconveniences you as the commando. You don't have a ton of options then. Um, and it's honestly not a great option for Commando 2 to take and keep an upgrade. It's best when you take it early, use it early, and then get rid of it. Or maybe throw one upgrade into it, to use it a little bit longer. Um, but it's it's not... It's another one that I wouldn't really recommend you hold on to as Commando. So I'm going to put this one uh, probably also in D tier. Higher than the bullpup because it does have a better use case scenario and it does scale better, but it's still not great um, if you wanted to take it because you're limiting yourself a lot on what uh, other weapons you can take if you're planning on fully upgrading it. Once again, this is only part one, so I'm going to be talking about how good these weapons are, uh, assuming that you're just going to buy them and then sell them too. All right, then we have uh, Support, and Support has a couple of these weapons because they already have the nail gun up here, which I guess I can talk about right now. Um, the nail gun for Support is pretty good. It's pretty cheap. It still does good damage. It's your first semi-auto gun, which is nice. It also scales well if you were going with the um, larger capacity magazines instead of faster reload. It helps, like, it, it works with either of them. And it's still quite a good gun. Um, I don't know if it's as good if you're, well, if you keep an upgrade, it's actually maybe better for support. Because if you keep an upgrade, it goes up to 8 weight. And that's fine, because then you'll still potentially have up to 12 weight that you can spare. So you'll still have plenty of options with this. So I think I'm going to still keep it in A tier. Maybe it'd go up to, like, higher A tier with uh, support than it would be with Berserker. Uh, it's not a bad weapon to keep all the way through the rounds if you wanted to. It's still pretty good. Let's talk about the HZ-12. If you were going to uh, take and upgrade the HZ-12 all the way. So the HZ-12 weighs 5, which is actually a really good weight. Um, it has a 16 round magazine capacity. It does, uh, well, it fires out 10 pellets that do 20 damage a piece. So it can do 200 damage assuming all the pellets connect. This also has a very strange rate of fire because you fire twice, pump it, fire twice, pump it. Um, so it does take getting used to because it is a very strange weapon. 
Um, and it scales okay. It scales by 10% increments. So it goes up to 30% more damage um, for the weight of three. Now going up to eight weight is perfectly fine as we've discussed with the nail gun. Don't have to worry about that, especially with support. And the damage scaling is still just kind of okay-ish. It's not spectacular. Um, this weapon, I think, is also one of those weapons that it's similar to like the Tommy gun, where it's better to grab it early on and plan on selling it. However, you do have extra weight with support, so that's not as much of an issue. Um, and this gun still has pretty good uses. So um, I think I'm going to put this one probably into lower B tier. Lower than these ones. Um, it's higher than C tier, I'd say, because support can essentially just have three shotguns. And you could have like the medic shotgun for healing and cleaning up trash, uh, whatever your main shotgun is for doing damage to everything else. And then when you run out of bullets with your medic shotgun and you still want to clean up trash, then you can go with the HZ-12 or something. It's it's just okay. It's probably like the most like middle to lower B tier weapon that I can think of if you were just going to upgrade it all the way. It is somewhat inconsistent though because of all the pellets it fires. Um, so, and it doesn't do the most damage per pellet. So, uh, that, that is also something to consider. All right. Up next, we have the double barrel and the double barrel boomstick is a pretty good gun. It weighs five weight. It holds two rounds in it. It does, um, well, it fires out 10 pellets that do 25 damage a piece, which is a lot. You do 250 damage if you connect with all of them, or you can fire both barrels, which will fire out 20 pellets. And you can do 500 damage, which is a lot of damage, especially unupgraded. Now, it's uh, upgrades don't really scale the best, at least looking at them. But this gun already has pretty high damage, so it doesn't. It, it's just kind of a bonus to it. Even if it didn't, even if it scaled worse than this, I think it would still be okay. But it scales in five percent increments, so five percent, ten percent, fifteen percent. So when it's maxed out, it does somewhere around like. 28 damage a pellet or so i think maybe up to 30 i don't think so but uh 28 29 damage somewhere around there per pellet which is still quite a lot of damage um this gun also has the unique ability of if you jump into the air and fire both barrels then it sends you back flying which gives you increased mobility which is actually way more useful than you might think um it's very useful if a flesh pound is charging you you can jump up uh, blast back even if it does a full combo with the flesh pound uh, trying to hit you you'll probably only get hit by the first attack none of the other attacks will hit you and you'll be safely away um, so that's a great option for it and uh, you can jump over fences that you know that you normally wouldn't be able to you can get out of situations if you get surrounded by aiming at your feet and jumping up that's a pretty good option as well um, overall this weapon is pretty strong and it's definitely a weapon that's good if you upgrade it it's good if you don't upgrade it um i think i'm gonna put the double barrel probably into s tier maybe lower s tier for upgrades though it is probably higher s tier if you were just planning on keeping it uh just for those couple waves and then maybe selling it maybe not maybe not even upgrading it the dragon's breath is also pretty good even on support um so it weighs five it holds a six round capacity, which is one of the lowest shotgun capacities, um, especially for like a tube fed shotgun, I should say, because essentially like the nail gun holds seven shots, I believe. Double barrel only holds two, but you reload it fast. Um, it uh, it shoots out six pellets that do 35 damage a piece uh, on impact and then can do fire damage, which does... Um, I believe it's eight fire damage on that plus more outside of that because it can spread. It can also cause ground fires. Um, ground fires, I believe, do 10 damage on the floor and then fire damage can spread to other enemies. So this is another one of those weapons, uh, like pretty much all of Firebug's weapons, that it's difficult to say exactly how good this gun is in terms of dealing damage. Uh, it depends on how many things that you can hit. And this weapon is more map specific than other shotguns. It, it'll work well on any map, but it's more um, it's more consistent with very uh, tight cornered maps. So if you have any of the maps like um, Sanitarium or uh, Catacombs or anything like that, uh, anything that has very tight choke points, then you can use this weapon much more effectively than you normally would. It's also very good for racking up assists because everything that you hit that catches fire and if your teammates kill them, 
you're, st you're uh, still making money on it. It um, scales in 10% increments. So it goes up to, uh, so it goes 10, 20, 30% at max uh, and up to three weight, which is eight. Not a big deal either. As we've discussed, eight weight is no issue for uh, support. That being said, it's probably one of the least um, useful shotguns for support to upgrade. It's still decent, but it's not the best because uh, scaling up the fire damage hardly scales damage at all with support, and scaling up the regular damage isn't as high as um, all the other tier 2 shotguns, I believe, at least in terms of practical use, uh, because you do have to reload this somewhat slow. It does shoot somewhat slow. I'm going to put this into C tier. Um, not the best weapon to take if you're planning on upgrading it all the way. However, like I said, if you're playing support, you have weight to spare, so you can take it. If you just want to clear trash with it, that's perfectly fine. Um, and then take other weapons. Uh, support has some pretty decent weapons. This is probably where I'd rank them if you were going to upgrade them all. Um, so C, B, A, and S tier. All right. Um, up next is demo weapon. Oh, wait, no. Up next is medic weapons, which is one. Um, the medic submachine gun. For the Medic is pretty good. It weighs three, which is great. It is one of the lightest guns in the entire game. It has a 40 round magazine capacity. Um, it shoots quite fast, just like all the submachine guns. It does uh, 20 damage per shot. And then its secondary ability is to heal people. You can also poison Zeds with the healing dart, but that's very low amounts of damage and you're really only gonna use that for the poison status effect if you ever intentionally use it at all. Um, and then with its upgrades, it upgrades pretty well, um, in 20% increments up to three weight and at 60% more damage, three weight is to six. That's still very low. Six weight is very manageable. You can take, I think any other medic weapon at that point, um, or any other class weapon too, if you want, since you're playing medic, um, you also reduce the charge time on it whenever you upgrade it, which is great. Um, it's a pretty good option, especially if you wanted to upgrade it. If you upgrade it all the way, y its damage is still pretty lacking. It does like 30 damage a shot, so it's not the, the heaviest hitting damage weapon, but it is a submachine gun, and it is one of the lightest submachine guns, and you can heal with it. Um, all of that combined still makes it a pretty great weapon for Medic, and I'm probably going to put this one uh, into A tier if you wanted to keep it with Medic. It's still really good. Um, still very flexible and, uh, yeah, I think that's where it belongs in terms of if you were going to use it. All right. Up next, we have demos weapons and demo has the C4 and C4, you can't upgrade. Um, it's one of the few weapons. Well, it's the only weapon in the game that you can't upgrade. Um, it weighs three. You get, um, I guess one magazine worth of it. You get three in total though, unless you're playing demo, of course, where you can get up to, I believe five more. So you can have eight. I think uh, it's been a little while since I used C4 on a max level demo and I just prestiged mine not too long ago. Um, the C4 does 820 damage with a four meter explosion radius. This is a really high amount of damage that you can uh, field anything. They also stick to any surface, including enemies. So it's not bad to toss these on uh, particularly the Patriarch. Then if he goes to run away and heal, you can potentially blow him up before he has a chance to do that, depending on how many you've stuck to him. Also, um, you want to space out your detonations when you're blowing these up, though, too, because um, if you blow them up one after another, it does reduce damage for each one that you blow up. So you'll be doing less damage than if you set them off um, a little bit slower. Um, let's see. Now, there is some use cases for C4. Um, I mean, three weight is great and 820 damage is... Uh, fantastic it's very very good at killing flesh pounds it's very good at destroying the patriarch it's good at hurting the king flesh pound it's also extremely good at blowing yourself up um, c4 is one of the easiest weapons to kill yourself with because it doesn't have a very uh, long range you just have to chuck it and it is very easy to throw it panic and blow it up pretty much right in your face killing yourself um, that has happened a lot of times to a lot of demos that i've seen including myself um so that's not way great. Um, that being said, you can't really upgrade it, which makes this list kind of weird for this weapon. You're probably still, if you're going to take it, you're probably going to take it later than tier two though, because you decided that you need a little bit more extra firepower. And in that case, it's pretty good. Um, I'm going to put it in B tier for demo. Um, 
it has a lot of potential to do great things and to do awful things to you. So that's why I think B tier is probably where it goes. If you're really good with demo, then it's probably either like A, it's probably A tier then. Um, if you're going to blow yourself up with it, then probably you want to stay away from it. It should probably be at the bottom of D tier. Um, it, it's one of those weapons. A lot of demos weapons are like that, which is funny, but it's not bad, uh, but you're probably going to buy it later. So I guess B tier is where I'd put it. It's also a pretty good off perk weapon too on certain classes like a uh, commando and SWAT. You can fit that into your loadout pretty easily and uh, like support too and survivalist. Um, all of those can make pretty good use of C4. <laughs> all right, up next we have the grenade launcher. And the grenade launcher is an interesting weapon. It weighs six, which is uh, okay. It has a one round capacity. You get one shot in it. Um, it has two different types, like many of two different types of damage, like many of demos weapons. It does 150 damage on impact, and then it does 225 uh, damage on explosion. Uh, the explosion radius is actually one of the largest out of any of demos weapons, being eight and a half meters. So it's pretty easy to kill a lot of trash with this thing. Um, it also scales okay, but it scales in weird increments. It scales up by 12% for its first level and then 18% on its second level and then 25% on its last level. So at max, it weighs eight and it's doing roughly 55% more damage, which is pretty good because it already has pretty high damage. Um, the weight of eight though, or wait, sorry, eight weight of nine, sorry, because it, it's six and it's three. So sorry about that. Uh, it, a weight of nine does heavily limit you, especially as demo where you don't have a lot of options then. Um, and it's not a weapon I would really recommend upgrading. It's a pretty okay weapon to get early on. Um, if you just plan on using it, uh, specifically on choke points, it's really good at holding choke points. Like, um, if you were going to stand up in the tower at like prison, you can usually, uh, focus that little courtyard where things spawn in right there pretty easily. Um, killing all the trash zeds and uh, having a high chance of knocking out the large zeds or medium zeds. And it's okay at like killing flesh pounds and stuff, but it's not a weapon I would really recommend taking and using for a long period of time. Um, it still does pretty decent damage though, so I think I'm going to put it into C tier under the supports uh, trench gun. All right, up next we have a uh, firebug and Firebug also has the trench gun. So let's talk about that one first since it's already up here. So the Dragon's Breath here, uh, as we said, does pretty decent damage. Um, its fire damage actually does scale well now with um, with Firebug. Its upgrades are much better with Firebug than they are with Support because Support has more diminishing returns than Firebug does. Uh, this is also one of your higher damaging weapons as Firebug, and going up to a weight of 8 isn't that bad. You can still... Um, have other weapons like the Mac 10 with you if you want to use that in combination or the dual Spitfires, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. Um, it's pretty good in that loadout and it's pretty good overall. Um, the floor fires do help out quite a bit because then you have the ground fire perk, which just makes them even better. Um, it does make holding choke points much better and it makes a better weapon for killing like Scrakes with, even though it's not a great weapon for killing Scrakes, it's a better weapon than, uh, most of Firebug's weapons. So for Firebug, I would probably say this is like probably A tier. Somewhere, I think it's below the Medic Submachine Gun, but above the uh, Nail Gun. So yeah, that's probably right there for Firebug and right here for support. That would be my opinion. Um, I guess I'm going to put them at their highest, where I think they would be the best, rather than put it just the first one that I'd seen. So I'm going to put the trench gun up here. All right, now we have the uh, Spitfires, which is the other Firebug Tier 2 weapon. And the Spitfires are really good. The Spitfires... Oh, also notice that I'm not doing uh, single pistols either. Um, single pistols are potentially more cost-effective, but if I did that in around the same price point, I'd be talking about almost all of uh, Gunslinger's guns. So I didn't want to necessarily do that. I wanted to keep them in the uh, tiers that they actually are. Because yes, like a Deagle early on is very efficient and one of the best early weapons because it only costs 550. It does high damage 
Um, it's, it's just really good on uh, Gunslinger. So uh, anyway, getting back to the Spitfires, the Spitfires weigh four. They hold 12 rounds in them. They do 40 damage per shot uh, upon impact, and then they do fire damage over time, um, as well as spreading fire over time, all the fire bug stuff. They can do all of that. Um, so they do a pretty good amount of damage with fire bug, I should say. And they have a pretty good rate of fire, too. They actually scale pretty well, too, with upgrades. Uh, each upgrade increases their damage by 25%. The first upgrade does not add any additional weight, which is also great. Um, and they go up to 75% more damage for four more weight, so they weigh eight. That's not a big deal. Eight is okay. Um, and doing 75% more damage is quite a bit. Uh, you really notice these things when you do upgrade them, and they are quite good with Firebug. Um, if I was going to rate them, if you were going to keep them with Firebug... Uh, they might actually be low S tier. I, they're definitely lower than the double barrel. I don't know. They're either low S tier or high A tier. One of the two with Firebug. Because Firebug makes use of them extremely well. You can clear so many little things with this so fast. And they are one of the most cost effective weapons for Firebug. So I think I'm going to put them in S tier above the trench gun. Uh, the trench gun has more niche uses, but the trench gun is still really good with Firebug too. Um, so I think that's where I'm going to put them. All right, and then let's move on to Gunslinger guns, which we're going to talk about a couple of them. Let's talk about the uh, the uh, the Spitfires here, since they are also Gunslinger weapons. Um, as Gunslinger weapons, these weapons are pretty bad. They're also pretty bad to upgrade. Uh, they're probably one of the worst weapons to upgrade with Gunslinger. That being said, if you're playing Gunslinger, they're probably still okay weapons because you're playing Gunslinger. They have okay damage. You don't get a whole lot of bonus from the fire damage just because you don't scale well with fire damage. So it's just the direct impact damage. They have slower projectiles and projectiles that drop more. So they're much harder to hit headshots with at uh, longer ranges. So they're not as useful for that. And even though they do scale well in terms of uh, scaling up to damage, they're still not as impressive as other gunslinger weapons. And you rarely take these with gunslinger. Usually if you do it, you're just uh, messing around. Um, they're not like a, a great gun on gunslinger. They're probably, I don't know if I'd put them D tier. Because they still have some use. They're not, although I... Would you really buy them over 1858s, though, is the problem? Because I don't think I would. And I wouldn't probably buy them over a medic pistol either. So they might, they're probably high D tier then for Gunslinger if you were going to upgrade them all the way. All right, let's talk about their counterparts, the Winter Bites. The Winter Bites uh, weigh the same as the Spitfire, so they weigh four. They hold 12 shots. They do 49 damage a shot, so they do a little bit more. And they. Uh, do 20 damage on explosion because they do the ice damage. They can also freeze enemies, which is good. Um, other than that, they pretty much exactly the same as Spitfires. Same rate of fire. Um, everything else is pretty much the same. They do scale better, though. Uh, they actually scale surprisingly well because they scale uh, by 40% and then another 40% and then 20%. So they actually double in damage overall, which is quite good because then they're going up to essentially 100 damage or you know, 98 damage plus explosion damage of 40. So they're doing pretty good damage per shot. They are a better option than the Spitfires for Gunslinger. However, I never really upgrade these things. Um, if, uh, as a lot of people have mentioned, the Winter Bites are great if you enter it into a game and you don't have money. Then they're great for a supporting weapon where you can get, uh, where you can still support the team, help out, um, you know, not potentially die and lose your money because that could happen, um, and still be of use to your team. That's where they excel the best at, I believe, um, as a weapon that you're going to spend money on, upgrade all the way. They're okay. They're better than the Spitfires, so I guess they're going into C tier. Um, maybe not above the grenade launcher, but. Yeah, probably C tier. They're all right. All right, up next we have the Dual 1911s. Now, I really like the Dual 1911s. The Dual 1911s uh, weigh four. They have a magazine capacity of 16. They do 50 damage a shot. They have a pretty good rate of fire. 
they scale very well. They actually scale the same as the winter bites. So 40, 40, 20. Uh, their first upgrade also does not add any additional weight to them, which is awesome. And, uh, you know, up to 100 damage at pretty good rates of fire is nice. They have a decent magazine capacity. They have very little recoil. They're overall a pretty okay gun if you wanted to upgrade them all the way. They're nothing fantastic. Gunslinger still has better guns than this uh, if you were planning on upgrading them all the way. But they're not awful. Um, so I'd probably put them probably also in like the middle of B tier. All right. And then we also have to talk about the center fire because Gunslinger has access to all the weapons, of course. So the center fire is actually really powerful even on Gunslinger. It has a weight of five. It holds 10 rounds in it. Um, it does 165 damage a shot, which is a ton of damage for a tier two weapon. Has a pretty decent rate of fire. It's the same rate of fire as the uh, Winchester. Same reload speed as well. And it scales quite well too, because it scales by 15% increments. So it goes up to 45% more damage at eight weight, which has it going up to something like 220-ish damage, 215-ish damage. Um, per shot when it's fully upgraded, which is really good. It's actually really powerful and it's even really powerful on uh, gunslinger. Um, there's really not a downside for picking this weapon and wanting to upgrade it completely with gunslinger other than you're just not using pistols. I don't think it's as strong for gunslinger as it is sharpshooter, but it's still quite strong for them and still a pretty good option. I'm going to put this probably at the top of A tier. It might be S tier for Gunslinger even. So Sharpshooter has a couple interesting tier 2 options. Um, they have a single Spitfire, which I'm going to talk about in this context, but I'm, I'm going to talk about it shortly because it is only a single gun rather than like all the other potential single guns that you could have at this amount of money. And as I've explained, um, the single Spitfire for sharpshooter is still not that great. Um, I should have included the single 1858 too in the other tier list. And for a single 1858, if you're going to keep it all the time with a uh, gunslinger, weight of four, damage of like 110, that's all right. It makes a pretty good sidearm. And I'd probably put it like B tier for them. I'd probably put the Spitfires in C or the single Spitfire for them in like C tier. Um, it's, it's still an okay sidearm it's not going to be your primary weapon but it's an okay sidearm so if you wanted to take it for fun um you can but i wouldn't really recommend it uh, so let's actually talk about their other tier two weapons that you will be using and that is center fire now as i said the center fire does incredibly high damage it scales very well um even if you don't want to upgrade it for five weight and 165 damage that is very very good um, and this is probably going right up into S tier. Um, I think just below the double barrel. It's about on the same level as double barrel, in my opinion. Uh, you know, high damage, good accuracy, pretty good sights, decent rate of fire, decent reload. Um, it's also incredibly good at body shotting enemies. So if you're not the best shot, this weapon will help you a lot because it hits a lot of thresholds, even on Hell on Earth, where you can still body shot a lot of the small enemies. You don't need to be going for headshots with this weapon, um, and you won't be feeling like you're wasting ammo either, because it'll be just one-shot body shot kill, things like that. Great weapon, um, and really strong upgraded all the way, too. It, it's fantastic. Um, and then we have the crossbow. Let's see, the crossbow weighs six. It uh, holds one shot. You can reclaim your crossbow bolts, though. It does 300 damage or 350 damage upon impact doing uh, piercing damage. It has a pretty low rate of fire as you'd expect from a single shot weapon. And it actually scales well. It scales by 20% increments going up to 60% for three weight going up to nine. Nine somewhat limits you on what you can take. You can still take one of the lever actions and get away with it though, just fine. And 60% more damage is quite a lot. I think it goes up to like 525-ish damage or so when it's fully upgraded, which is quite a bit. It can also pierce through multiple enemies too. Uh, if you're going to keep the crossbow though, it's it's really good with uh, Sharpshooter. Um, I'm probably going to put this like into A tier. It It's a pretty good weapon um, if you know what you're doing with it. It's definitely map dependent though. Um, on certain maps, it's just not good. You don't want to be using it in any uh, real 
uh, compact areas. Sharpshooter doesn't really like tight maps anyway, so. All right, and then let's finally talk about SWAT's tier two weapons, which we've already talked about one, so let's go with that. Or actually, we've talked about two, sorry. We've got the Medic SMG and the Tommy Gun. So let's start out with the Medic SMG. The Medic SMG is really, really good for uh, SWAT. It weighs a very low amount. It upgrades very well. You're pretty much always going to take this on SWAT because there's no reason not to. Being able to heal allies and just have another gun that's also cheap and this early on is you're like, you're going to keep it. So that's probably going to go right up into S tier for SWAT. You know, A tier for Medic, S tier for SWAT because Medic has more options. Um, they're not as limited by their arsenal as SWAT is. So S tier for Medic, Submachine Gun. Tommy Gun. Tommy Gun is one of the highest damaging gun. Uh, well, just, yeah, one of the highest damaging guns that SWAT has, which makes it very good. It does weigh quite a bit, but that's not too big of an issue because you're guaranteed to have another submachine gun that you can pretty much fully upgrade. And it pretty much bumps the Tommy Gun up quite a bit. For, um, for SWAT, I'd probably put it into, like, higher B tier. Um, still pretty good option. Maybe even to low A tier, but I guess it just depends. And then finally, let's talk about the MP5. So the MP5 weighs four. It has 40 rounds in the magazine. It has a pretty high rate of fire, just like all the submachine guns. It actually has one of the higher ones, same as the uh, MP7. It does 25 damage a shot. And it scales by 20% increments each time you upgrade it. So it scales up to 60% for three more weight. That's only seven weight. That's not bad. Um, there is kind of an issue with the MP5, though, and that is that the Medic submachine gun exists. The Medic submachine gun almost matches it in terms of practical damage, and you get way more utility out of it. It weighs one less for the same-ish damage, and it can heal. So it, it automatically can't be as good as the medic smg however it's not bad if you want to keep it all the way there but it's also not great um i'm gonna put this in low c tier but i can see somebody putting it in d tier too because it it honestly isn't the best weapon um if you wanted to keep it and upgrade it but it's not the worst either because you still are guaranteed to have another fully upgraded submachine gun with this unless you had the tommy gun um because I think the Tommy gun can only be fully upgraded with a couple of submachine guns like the Medic SMG. And I believe the Vector can too. I think you can go with both those. Uh, I could be wrong about that though. So this is where I'd put all of the weapons in terms of if you were going to upgrade them, if you were planning on keeping them, which weapons are the best, which weapons aren't that great. Um, certain classes definitely have a high point here. Certain classes definitely have a low point here as we've seen. You know, Commando definitely has a low point when it comes to Tier 2 weapons. Uh, but then other classes like uh, Support, uh, Sharpshooter, and SWAT are definitely pretty good. And Firebug too. All of them definitely have good Tier 2 weapons. So that's going to be the end of Part 1 for this video. This is where I rank them all. Tune in next time to see part two, where we're going to be looking at all these weapons in terms of their practical use of when you would buy them and when you would sell them and how good they would be in that uh, time frame. So this would probably be around, you know, wave three to wave five to six on a 10 round map. Um, you know, are you going to keep them only for, you know, one or two waves? Are you going to keep them for longer? How good are they then? We'll talk about them then. So, uh, Thanks everybody for watching this. I really do appreciate it. I appreciate all the support you guys have been showing lately. I, I really do appreciate it. Um, you guys have been crazy with the comments, um, coming to the live streams, buying the merch, um, supporting over on Patreon. All of that is amazing. And I'd like to tell all of you, thank you so very much for doing that. I really do appreciate it. Also, if you're not subscribed, be sure that you are subscribed. I've noticed that a lot of people aren't subscribed that are watching these. So subscribe. I'm going to make more of them and they should be fun. Uh, so thanks everybody for coming. I will talk to you guys next time. Until then, stay cool and bye.